Now let's go a little bit into how to thin a wire harness here. Uh, this wire harness uh, coming out of this car, it's being turned into this race car. And what I did is before I actually got the car to the point where it would no longer run, I went through and started disconnecting components and making sure that the car would run with those components disconnected. So for example, all of this stuff here is wiring for uh, the airbag system, which in a race car, you don't want your airbag system in place. I mean, it's gonna go off immediately. So we're eliminating that and I cut the ends off of the wires that go to the airbag modules and that way I know these can be fully removed from the harness. I made sure that the car would still run without these in. This car did, there may be some vehicles out there that won't. So you could see I've got cut off things in this harness just kind of everywhere. And now the job gets tedious. What we're going to do is we're going to start removing all of these wires from the harness. We're going to start by laying the harness open. And you want to be kind of careful here. There's going to be wires that you're going to need. And you don't want to damage those wires or the insulation of those wires while you're cutting this stuff apart. You can see here I've got, you know, just little plastic things, stuff that gets in the way. But we're going to get all this out of the way, get all this electrical tape and harness shielding off. Now, immediately I've opened this up and I see right here I've got a splice. Splices can be really tricky because you may be eliminating some items that go to the splice, but not all items that go to the splice. Here's another thing. Right here, I've got a wire tied into the harness that went nowhere. This didn't go to anything. There's a connector on it, but the connector is taped off, and it didn't go anywhere. So you want to, when you get that type of deal, you're going to cut that out immediately and just get it out of the circuit so you know it can be eliminated. So note the splices, take a good look at those wires that come apart like that, and again, just start separating all of this electrical tape and harness shielding, and then you can start eliminating. All right, so I keep opening this up, and right here I've got a spliced wire, and this wire is going into the pigtail that I don't need. I'm going to cut that off. I'm going to leave a little bit of length on it just for identification. The other thing is, as you see these harnesses right here, these wires have a um, a foil shield on them. These shields, if you're retaining a circuit that has the shield, it's kind of important that you don't damage that shield. Uh, the reason for that is that the shield itself is designed to reduce the possibility of electrical interference with this circuit or if you have a, a, a like a high voltage injector driver on a diesel or something like that um, it may be to help uh, keep that circuit from actually putting off a lot of uh, electrical interference to other components so watch the shielded stuff in this case the shield is going to come out we don't need that in this harness because it's one of the things that's been eliminated. So we'll keep going here. Okay, so now I would recommend that you focus on one series of circuits at a time. So this group of wires right here, which I know was all airbag, it comes into this main harness. And I've already cut one of the uh, splices that I saw, and here's another one that I have right here. So I'm going to trim this one off. Again, I'm leaving a little length here. And the reason I'm leaving that length is just because if I want to add a circuit later, I might be able to do that right here. And I'm pretty confident that this is a power circuit. So in other words, if I wanted to add a power to a different circuit later, maybe like a fire extinguisher bottle or something like that, I can use this, okay? So the other thing I'm doing is now I'm seeing this wire right here is kind of wrapped around. I'm going to go ahead and cut that so that I can get it out of the circuit without any problems. 
and I see that it's laying in with another wire of the same color, orange and black, that means that it's most likely going to run into a splice somewhere upstream. So slowly but surely, we're separating out all this stuff. And here, I've got this circuit, which is cut off, and I see that I've got this wire here that's part of this circuit going back the opposite direction. I'm probably going to trace that back and just cut it off as I see here that it's coming around, it's coming into this portion of this circuit, and it's going to end up coming all the way up into these hard shell connectors. Again, it's a circuit that I don't need, so I can go ahead and trim it out. Okay, so now we can do this deal clean or we can do it dirty. I prefer to do it clean. What I mean by that is we're going to actually, every wire that we've got that we don't need like this, where it comes into a hard shell connector rather than just cut it off there, uh, where it can create some issues, I'm going to pull it out of that hard shell. So I'm actually going to take this little cover off the back of the hard shell connector. And it's cold in my garage right now, so things are not really cooperating. And I'm going to take this cover off, which will allow me to access the wires through the back of the hard shell connector. And uh, then once I've got that, where I can access them, like this, so get that off there. Okay, now I can see that I've got this wire going into this the back side of this connector right there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this red plastic retainer out and that's sometimes easier said than done. But if you can get to the side like that, go to both sides, start working on, oops, broke it. All right. Well, not too big of a deal on this since I think just about everything's going to end up being eliminated. I'm just going to keep working this to get that red out of there, that red retainer out of there. I'm going to pause this here for a minute. So still working on this retainer. I've gotten this underneath that retainer there and just kind of, there we go, got it out. All right, now this wire comes into this end pin and you can see it moving it's right there on the right and what i'm going to do now is i'm going to take this and i'm going to slide that down along that pin and release that tab with the tab released i should be able to pull the wire out this one's giving me fits Okay, I'm going to have to get something a little smaller than this blade that doesn't quite fit down in there, so hang tight. Okay, so for little stuff, little tiny pins like that, this guy right here is pretty handy. This is a sewing pin or a hat pin, and it can go in and get into this hard shell connector to release that tab. So we'll use that, slide it down the side here like that. release the tab and pull the wire there we go got it so now i'm just going to pull the wire straight out just like that that's not that hard to do and it's not really all that time consuming uh, so if you could pull those pins all the way out get the wire completely out of there it's going to clean up your end result quite a bit and that's really what you want I don't know who said it, but I think maybe Smokey Eunuch, I don't remember, but somebody said at some point that a race car should be, should look like it's made up of half as many parts as it actually has. And this kind of stuff where we're going to take the wire all the way out, just, it, it gets us that point, you know, really cleans it up, simplifies it and removes any question as to whether or not that's a needed circuit. So we're going to continue thinning. Got another one here going into a different connector. It's the same thing. We're going to take this back off. So 
we can access the wire from the back. And of course, this one's going to bite me. There we go. All right. And we're just going to go through that same process, pull the, re the red retainer out of there and uh, then pull the wire out. Okay, so I'm identifying stuff. Not only does this harness have to come out, but I've also got all this stuff over here with the exception of this one wire that I want to keep. So that's going to be a little goofy because that means I'm going to have to take a whole bunch of, of uh, insulation off there to keep one wire, which is kind of a pain in the ass. This needs to come out here. There's a whole bunch of things that are coming out. However, I'm going to keep this. And then as this harness continues to move into this main harness here, okay, I come over here and see, all right, here's a connector I definitely need. This is the instrument cluster. So what I'm going to do is any connectors that I need before I actually cut the insulation away from the main loom where it goes in, I'm going to wire tie or tape these wires together to help me keep track of them a little easier. And then I'm going to start cutting all this stuff and we'll continue to expose all the wires that we're going to be removing. This is where it gets really tedious. However, right now, um, I've got 11 minutes of video time, but honestly, only about 20 minutes of work time. All right, so I've pulled all of this stuff off of my uh, harness. Probably going to keep these around. It's nice to be able to uh, put things like these retainers back on, or this stiffens the wire harness. And obviously, this is a wire harness guide. A lot of time when we want to put this thing back together again, it's worth it to give up a little bit of weight to put those kinds of things in there to help make sure that that wire harness can be routed in a way that keeps everything from moving around, resist, uh, you know, reduces the uh, chance of uh, chafing or cutting, shorts, things like that. You can see here that all the circuits that I want to keep, I've used wire ties to tie them off right at the main harness here. And the reason I use the wire ties personally is because if there's a circuit there with a wire tie on it, that's not factory. I know I've been there. I know I have specifically decided to keep those circuits. There's no question about it. Here's a circuit that a lot of people wouldn't keep in a race car. This is a power plug. I absolutely think that having a power plug in a uh, race car is a nice thing. Uh, if I need to uh, hook in like a... Uh, uh, some kind of data collection like a uh, aim or something like that a lot of time it's uh, easiest to power them through something like that and uh, You know, maybe I just want to charge a cell phone So I've gone through and identified everything I need and I've tied all of them off and Now I'm going to slice this main harness and start pulling wire out of it All right right here. I've got a splice and I have wires coming into this splice from both ends of connectors I don't need. So this right here, these two wires come into here. And then I've got these two wires coming in on this side. That means that I may need to have a couple of these wires on this side splice, but I don't need this. I'm going to cut that splice so I still see the blue so that I know that something else was going in there, but it was unneeded. And then I'm going to cut the two wires going in that are in the other circuits that I know aren't needed. Again, I'm going to leave a little length. Okay, there we go. And now that circuit here, uh, I'm getting more and more of that pulled out. You see that the harness starts getting real messy because a lot of time what your manufacturers are going to do is they're going to twist the harness. And part of the reason for that is because a twisted harness can support its own weight uh, a little bit more easily than just a harness that's non-twisted. So uh, you're going to see this is pretty common, but it makes it a real pain in the tail to get all these wires separated. So I'm now at a point where I'll probably start cutting individual wires and pulling them back out of the harness lengthwise. This is where it gets time consuming. By the time all is said and done, it'll probably take me a couple hours to get this harness completely thinned. Okay, so you get the idea. 
I've been pulling all these out of the loom. These are all twisted pairs that actually would go to speakers. They go into that hard shell connector. They'll be eliminated completely. Here, I started getting wires that are going to my uh, fuse panel. And so what I do with anything that goes into the fuse panel is I actually keep them. Again, I might need power in here somewhere. Uh, and I've got a built-in source of powers right there. I'll remove them once the vehicle build is done and I know I don't need any more power sources anywhere. And I'll remove them the same way I did the uh, uh, pins that came out of those other hard shell connectors. Take the connector apart, pull the wires out. Right here, you can see that we've got this connector coming in from outside, which means that this is gonna all be coming in from the main engine uh, block or fuse block, what Ford calls a battery junction block. So a lot of this stuff I'm gonna need, but some of it's gonna end up being eliminated. And at any rate, we'll just keep working on this harness. I've already got, oh, probably about 40% of the wires out that I need to get out. This video is now about 16 minutes long and I've been working on it for about a half hour. So like I said earlier, gonna be a couple hours to get all that out of there. The key to thinning these harnesses is, number one, identify everything that you're keeping. Number two, identify everything you're removing. Clearly identify it. Number three, lay the harness open, start tracing the wires back. Number four, take your time. This is not something you wanna rush through. Just take your time, do it right. You'll get the harness thinned and uh, you'll be really happy with the results. If you do it right, everything's gonna work. There's gonna be no issues.